BuddyBase helps us to build data-driven applications. So the first thing we'll be asked to do when we create a BuddyBase application is to add a data source. Now, if you have no external data source to add, you can use BuddyBase's internal database tables. These are built on top of a relational database called CouchDB, which is very similar to MongoDB. And with that database, we're able to have tables, relationships, and everything we'd expect to be able to do from a database. We could add data from scratch. We could use sample data to get us started, to get an idea of what data might look like inside of a BuddyBase application, or we can upload data in the form of CSV or JSON, and we'll try to work out what your fields should be and populate them for you. But more often, you're going to arrive with data that already exists somewhere else. Whether that's a REST API where we can build groups of queries to be able to have CRUD functionality, some kind of relational database from Microsoft SQL, MySQL, and PostgreSQL, a non-relational database like CouchDB or DynamoDB or MongoDB, Amazon Object Store, or even a spreadsheet application such as Airtable or Google Sheets. For this video, we're going to connect to a PostgreSQL data source. So I'll click on PostgreSQL and I'll get the connection details. Now I'm hosting my Docker instance locally and my Postgres instance locally. So I know that my string to connect is host.docker.internal. Yours will be different, obviously. So you'll put yours in. The standard connection port is 5432. The database I want to connect to is called Pet Store. Then the username and password are Kevin. I'll click connect. And I'll be presented with a list of tables that are exist on the database and ask which of those I want to import. I can choose to exclude a single table continue without fetching, or as I'm going to do, just fetch all of the tables. Now, what that will do is it will find the schema details for each of the tables and import the data as it is now. I've got some appointments, some owners, and some pets. Each of the columns will match the schema types from my Postgres database. But at the moment, these are separate tables, and I would like to define some relationships on them. So go to owners. And I'm going to say that an owner can have multiple pets. So I'll define a relationship, one to many. So one owner can have many pets. The key here I'm going to use is owner ID. I want to link this to the pets table. And the key I want to use over there is also called owner ID. I can rename the columns. These are just for my internal use. This could be owner and pets. I'll save that. And I can see the pet IDs are listed here. And if I go to the pets table, I can see the owner names are listed there. Now, the owner ID is not very useful as a way to be able to reference the pets. And the reason it's the owner ID is because that's the first column here on the left-hand side of my pets table. What I'd like to do is have the name be the display column. So I'll go to the name column, press the three dots and click use this display column. Now, when I go back to owners, I can see the pets that are going to exist there. I can create records in this table so I can create myself. So Kevin Cunningham, Kevin at buddybase.com. My number will be 555-5555. And that record has been saved to my database now. Let's give me a pet, add a new record, a pixel. The owner is going to me, be me, so I'll click the plus. I'll type in Kevin and I'll find me. The age of the pet is two. I don't know the breed, but it is a guinea pig. So guinea pig. So I'll save that record. It's auto filled in the owner ID, which is what's being persisted to the database. And the pet ID is 12. You can see my name being displayed here. And in the owner's table, I can see my pet name being displayed there as well. So I can create new records, I can read new records, I can update records. So my guinea pig, I find out is a Teddy guinea pig. And I can also delete. So this Daisy poodle doesn't have an owner. I'm going to delete Daisy. So I'll put a tick here and press the bin icon to delete and then continue. If I go back to my settings page, I can see here that I've got my tables. And if I refetch the tables, what this will allow me to do is to remove tables from my BuddyBase instance if I no longer need them. 
Um, if I refetch these tables and the schema hasn't changed, then any formulas or any fields where I've changed the data type locally will be unaffected. But if there has been a change in schema, I'll refetch and my tables will match the database. I've got this relationships tab, which shows that relationship of owners to pets that we've created already. So I can define relationships from here. So I could say that a pet has some, some appointments. So I'll say from pets using the pet ID to the appointments table, and we use the pet ID there as well. And we can save, and that relationship will be here. And now on the appointments table, I'll be able to see which pet those appointments relate to. In the pets table, I'll be able to see which appointment they relate to. And again, this is the ID. I probably want to make the date, the display column, so that when I'm in my pets, I can see the date of the appointments that my pet has had. I also have the queries tab, which allows me to create custom SQL queries, but we'll look at those more in the, later in the course, and the settings, which allows me to download the schema so that I can share it with the BuddyBase team to help with troubleshooting. If we do want to update the connection settings, there's this cog here, which will allow us to update um, the connection settings, and if necessary, provide certificates and client keys if our database instance requires that. We now have full CRUD functionality for our SQL database through the data tab in BuddyBase.